Hey, Stencil fans. Um, it's Patty with Studio R12. We are about to start our buzzworthy little project here. We've got some bees. I'm going to show you some of our other bee projects. We're going to mask in this lesson. We're going to do a two-part stencil. We're going to highlight, and we're going to do this streaky, cool, kind of misty background. And I think that you're going to learn so much. Hey everybody, it's Patty with Studio 12, and today we are a buzz with a B project. So I am going to show you how to do this fun background, how to do a highlight through your lettering, and how to use a two-part stencil. I haven't shown that before. So um, stay tuned, we're gonna have a lot of fun doing this project. You're gonna learn a lot. And we're gonna start with our MDF board, which is available on studior12.com. And if you're catching us on Facebook Live, welcome. And we're so glad that you're here. If you're catching us on YouTube, welcome. And we're so glad that you're here. Um, if you want to see the lives and get in on the prizes, which we're gonna draw for two sets of brushes today, then make sure you head on over to Facebook if you're coming in from, through YouTube and or from our website even, and go ahead and sign up um, or like and share our page and then if you're going the other way from Facebook go over to YouTube and subscribe and ring the bell and that will let you know when we have new content. So the prizes today, two sets of the brushes. These are the um, slightly less expensive version of the purple dome brush because these the biggest one is really difficult to get right now. These are all imports. These are just a little bit easier to get so same company makes them. These are a little bit cheaper, but they work. These are what I used before they made this. So it's a good brush. And if you are on a budget, these are a good, a good bet. Our grand prize. We're going to do drawings at the 12 noon, and we're going to do drawings at the 9 o'clock tonight in the recast. So and we're answering live questions during both. Um, and we're going to do the drawings on both. And we're also going to do a grand prize on both. And that is going to be for a $30 shopping spree. If you will post a picture of something you've stenciled on our Facebook page. And you get extra bonus points if you post something that is made with our stencils. Okay, so um, just bonus point to win the shopping spree. And that shopping spree, 30 bucks, will get you a bunch of stencils. It'll get you a brush set and some stencils. It's good for a lot. So I think that you will, whoever's the lucky winner, will be very happy. Okay, so we're gonna get started right now. We're gonna go into our cream color. Um, these are honey jars, and this is um, acrylic paint, so any acrylic paint's fine. The, the thinner it is, the less it's going to coat, so watch that. Always shake your paint. And then these are honey jars that we pour ours into. We buy it by the gallon, so we have to put them into smaller containers. Um, and there is an affiliate link below that will um, show you where we get those from and all of the other products that I use that we don't carry on our website. I try to let you know as we're going. All right, so we're going to use a foam brush. This is a poly foam brush. These are amazing. Um, they're super, um, super dense. They're not floppy. They're not cheap. Um, they're not expensive, but they're not cheaply made. That's what I meant to say. Okay, we're going to do streaks going straight across. One thing that's difficult about a round surface is if you're trying to make straight streaks, you and dribbling paint, um, it's really easy to want to follow the pattern of the board, so you want to be careful of that. And then you can kind of lean, so be careful of that too. So I'm going to go straight up and down. I'm going to just really kind of focus my arm. And notice that I'm not pushing to base coat. I'm streaking. So my pressure is little. And I'm not trying to cover the whole entire board. I'm covering most of the board. So put in the chat where you guys are from. Tell us what the weather's doing there how long you've been painting. Let us know who you are. We read all the comments. Uh, we make comments amongst ourselves all week long about comments sometimes. So like we wanna know what you guys want us to know. So make sure you're talking to us and let us know. This is how we get to learn about you guys. If there's ever anything that you wanna, um, you know, something that you would like to see made. Somebody popped in a couple weeks ago and they wanted to do um, like barn quilt signs and stuff like that. So if you have ideas, let us know in the chat. Okay, so we we'll just get a nice even coat, but leaving some streaks. 
The craze for bees is astronomical. It is, um, it is not dying down. It's been going for a couple of years, and I think it's just getting bigger and bigger. What I like about the bee theme is you can use it in your garden. You can use it for, um, like, grandmas like bees, so you can make gifts and you can sell in um, trade shows um, or in your, um, oh, that's, you know what? That is something we've been talking about a lot. How many of you actually paint to sell? And then if you wouldn't mind sharing, like where do you paint to sell? Like where do you, are you on Etsy? Are you on Facebook? Do you do shows? You know, do you have, like how are you doing it these, these days? It's been a weird world for about a year. So um, I'm curious about how you're selling these days. Anyway, um, so back to this. Kids' rooms, these are out, unless your kid's afraid of bees, but this is super good, and I love, like, this really just positive statement, this humble and kind, like, that bees are almost being known for, like, just being, like, this positive person, like, be happy and be humble and be kind and that kind of thing, so I think, um, I like that positive message. Okay, while this is wet and I haven't talked it dry, we are going to go into this kind of, um, it's like a bluey greeny color. It's not quite, not quite blue, not quite green. Put a little bit of my palette with my wet brush. I'll go ahead and just kind of blend it just a teeny bit. And then we're gonna go in and just add some streaks of the blue. It's just gonna give it a little bit of a warmth. If there's something you don't like, so say I think that these are too stacked up right here, one, one, blah, blah. Um, go right back into your other color and just mask them. Um, paint is a layers game. Painting, stenciling is a layers game. So you want to just paint it until it's pretty and keep layering and layering until you got it. If you layer too much and you really feel like you um, lost it somewhere along the line, um, you can do one of two things. You can sand it. How many of you have done this before, right? Um, put a hands up in the chat. Um, if you sand it, you can sand it right back off. You can use a palm sander if you want to. You can flip it over, paint the back. Um, don't forget that there is a back to these projects. If you're not going to hang it on a wall, you can always put seasonal things on back and front, and you could put rope to hang it. Um, so that's just some thoughts with that. Okay, so this is our background, and I'm going to switch to a dry board now. I'm going to switch to a place where I can find to put my board. Hang on. There we go. I've got some stacks of things back here. All right, so I've got the B base. This is our two-part stencil part. I've got the B base already in the black. Okay, and we're going to grab glasses. Get it lined up. There's kind of a lot of words on here. So those of you who struggle with bleeding under, I'm gonna show you just right now the um, technique that you can use to not bleed under when you stencil. That's a super, super good lesson to learn. And I think a lot of us can use reviews. Um, I was saying, I don't know, a few weeks ago that, um, that I even still can bleed under because I get in a hurry. Taping. Taping is super important. Um, if you're going to um, do your project and you tape only one spot, notice that you can still move that. Okay? That's not good. So now I'll get it lined back up. I should do that before I line up. I do that every time. Okay. Then we're going to tape both sides. Just tape it under. Now I can grab the edge and then look, I can't move that at all. So it is anchored down. We're going to use our dome brush. And notice that our dome brush is cut. So this is the secret weapon for not bleeding under your stencils. This is, so the flat brushes are flat and when you hit them on the, on the, the surface, it makes the bristles go out. So the dome brush doesn't do that. When you hit it on the surface, it is just balanced on that little toe right there. And then you can swirl around and the only thing that's touching it is just that middle. So, and then as you push, you can get a little more pressure. These are good for stippling and they're good for swirling. So I'm going to show you that right now. So in order to have control over our painting and over our bleeding under, um, we are going to use a few things that we can control. There's that like famous saying that only try to control the things you can control. So we, we have a few things that we can do. 
So you're going to control whether your brush has any water in it. You're going to control how much paint that you put on your brush. You're going to control the swirling on the paper towel, and you're going to control your, um, your pressure. Okay, so those three things. And you can control your speed. That's where I get tripped up because I just try to push and hurry. And um, that does two things. Sometimes I'm not spending as much time on my paper towel. And then sometimes, uh, because I'm going fast, I'm pushing too hard. Both of those things I can control if I slow down a hot second. Good point, Patricia. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna load this brush right here on the toe. I'm just gonna pick up some paint right there. And it's just a teeny little bit of paint. It's not, I'm not scooping and wadding. I'm gonna go on my paper towel straight down and then I'm gonna twirl it around about 10 times and then give it a little off tap over here, a couple swirls. Okay, and then I'm gonna come up here. Now watch this, this is really cool. A lot of people only stipple. They go up and down and that, it's hard on your shoulder. It's kind of exhausting, um, especially if you have a lot of projects to do. So the swirling will save you so much time and so much effort and who needs that? I do. So I wanna always save time. That's why I'm usually in a hurry. So we're gonna come over here and we're just gonna start swirling. Now watch what happens here is watch how fast I can go with that. Now I don't mean fast like I'm hurrying. It's just fast and doing its job. Now notice it's not all black yet. Um, it's still definitely dusty looking. That's also one of the things you can control. If I didn't want dark letters I'm gonna do some peeking. How many of you are peekers? Okay, so if I wanted those to stay soft, I could absolutely leave that right there and not do any more. If I wanted it to be really soft, I could just use a little pressure, but then I can just repeat it until it's as dark as I want. So by dusting, it gives me a lot of choices. Okay, so I'll come over here. And what I like too is as I'm dusting, over here, it's drying over here. So by the time I get all the way around, isn't that magic? Don't you love, do you know how long this would take you if you were basing and tracing and, and transferring and, and even if you were cricketing, um, if you were doing that, you would still have to weed every one of these little pieces. I don't know about you, but I like things just done for me and ready to go. Um, the nice thing about the Mylar stencils is they are food safe, which is really interesting. Not that you're gonna put a giant bee on a cake or anything, but and we have small um, stencils that could be used for cookies and coffee and all of that, but, um, and cakes. But it also, um, they're reusable. And so you don't have to wash them every time, but when you are ready to wash them there, you can wash them and um, they work really well getting just hot soapy water and clean them off. Okay, we're completely dry over here. And then this is gonna dry while I come around a second time. Okay, so how many of you struggle with bleeding under and think that this is gonna be the solution? And those of you that already have these brushes, if you don't mind sharing with other people, because that's what like this, so like we have social media and then that's all great and fine because that's your family and your friends and you wanna know what they're doing and catch up with them. But this is how you learn how to do your like hobby and your fun. So if you guys are on here and you can see other people chatting or asking questions, I, we have such a good group. Um, our stencil fans are absolutely the best. So if you go ahead and share with others about whether you like the brushes, don't like the brushes, um, whether you're bleeding under, what's not working, any of that kind of stuff, I think that we all need to have that. That community for us is, is invaluable. Okay, so see how fast that goes and see how I can just talk and you can you know watch YouTube videos while you're painting and just kind of swirl mindlessly in a way. Um, this is just such a nice um, big open area. And then in just a second, I'm gonna show you how we add the highlight, which is a, kind of a more advanced technique. It doesn't need to be um, because it's just really basic, but I think people don't think about it. So when I started stenciling, I had no idea that a stencil by definition is just a mask. So you just literally are masking your background. Hey, I can't see without these. Um, you're masking your background. So you're just preventing paint from going everywhere. And that's what a stencil does. And we have thousands of stencil titles. Um, we have them for every freaking occasion you can imagine. Um, it's like, it's absolutely amazing how many stencils we have. And we have them in all the sizes as well. 
So when you go to Studio R12, um, hey, if you go to Studio R12, when you go there, there is a magic wheel that you can spin when you get there. And that wheel, um, you, you click it, and that wheel gives you a discount, and then it gets you entered into our newsletter. Our newsletter gives you the sales. We don't do any of that on social media. Um, we just do that in email, because if you don't want to hear about that all the time, we feel like that just clutters up social media. So we just directly email. So if you want to know about discounts, sales, bonuses, any of that stuff, then make sure that you um, go click the wheel and you'll get signed up. But um, so sizes. We all, we also have, ooh, can't talk. We also have things in many sizes. So our, like this stencil's available in a couple sizes. Um, some stencils are three, some are five, some are 15. Um, so just depending on what the stencil is, there's a lot, of, um, a lot of variables, a lot of options. So you're not stuck with an 18 inch circle. You can paint it in many sizes. So we like that, I like options. And I love our tumblers. What's in your tumbler right now? I've got, I doubled up today. I've got um, a chamomile tea and a peppermint tea. So I feel like I've got my yin and yang going on there. All right, I wanna do a little share and show and tell while this is finishing drying. Um, we've got some other bee stuff. So let me show you those. Um, these are, this is the Bumblebee and, <clears throat> and Co. Bee Farm and it's local honey. This local honey and everything, Guys, last year, my like garden, my cucumbers didn't get pollinated because I didn't have a lot of flowers planted. And this is important. We need to get behind our bees. Um, this is STCL 5161. And I think that might be why people are so excited about the bee theme um, is because they realize it's a problem. Okay, and here's the Busy Bee um, Garden Company. Lovely for a porch, um, any kind of porch decor, if you have a sunroom, any of that. This is STCL 3490. And remember, these are all available in different sizes. And these would make awesome, awesome gifts for people who are crazy about bees or gardening. And then we have Sarah's Honey. So we have a bunch of personalized stencils on our website. And I love, don't you love this background? That's a wax resist. That's a, this is um, a video on YouTube. You can learn how to do the wax resist um, on there. So we have videos on YouTube that are um, what we call them quick videos and they literally don't have anybody talking to you. We just type out the instructions and show you the video of how we do it. So this is a simple technique, so that's one of those. So you can look at that. And then on our website, you go to the personalized stencils. This might be in the honey stencil too, or in the bee stencil category. And then you can change that name to anything. So a super great personal gift. Okay, a couple more. Here we go. This is Farmhouse Local Honey. And I love, we use the banding stencil to stencil around there. And I love, I love local anything. I, I just think that's just amazing, love it. And then this one has been one of our best sellers for a long time. Um, people don't seem to get tired of this queen bee, because aren't we all queen bees? And it's got the crown, it's got French, so you can use this in your French decor, you can use it in your shabby chic, you can use it you know, in your, you know, your just modern farmhouse and stuff. This is a very streaky background. If I wanted, notice how these are related. So if I added a little bit of yellow to that, I could get, and sanded through it, I could get these two in the same family. So that's how you get that effect on the background. This is STCL 917. That's our SKU on the website, so if you need to search. This one is just lovely. Look at that little blush pink. And it's the same thing I'm doing here today, so, and it's on a square. So if you wanted to do the same thing I'm doing with the bee today, then all you'd have to do is do a blush pink background, and wouldn't that be cute in a girl's room? Love it. And last one, it's the same stencil family. This one's just bigger. <clears throat> so same exact painting technique. This one, we have antiquing on the edge instead of just a little bit of antiquing. Um, highlight through the middle, same colors. Okay, that's my show and tell. Oh. STCL 5690. All right, let's do the highlighting. So we're gonna come over here, get our white out. <clears throat> so this is where the mask really comes in handy. Okay, we're gonna pick up our white, 
gonna dry rub right there. And we're gonna go right through the middle. This couldn't get any easier. The only thing, and actually, it's doing a fine job of getting my stencil, and it's not doing a fine job of getting in those letters. The reason it's not is because those letters are super skinny. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slow down and pay attention to our letters, and we'll probably have to stipple that. Yep. When you get skinny stuff, real thin stuff, you have to stipple. You don't have a choice. Okay. So, and then what you want to be careful of is that you don't um, end up with a line. So be careful of that. And then we'll just go wandering through. And then you'll notice all stipple, right? Dab in the middle, all the way across. Okay. And then I'll go back and kind of stipple up and down, and that'll give it a fade. Okay, and now shall we peek? I'm always a peeker. Okay, so see how that just gives that, that just gentle little, um, just a little bit of highlights, a little bit of interest, it's amazing. It's just a really good, good technique. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. Now I'm gonna show you how to do the two-part stencil. Okay, so make sure you're like, sharing, and commenting. If you've just joined us, our prize is on our Facebook Live, which are always on Tuesdays um, at noon and recast at nine, and we're answering your questions live during these. That's why they're lives for us. Um, so we're gonna do two sets of brushes for each one of the lives, the recast and the morning, and then we're going to do, um, oh, I keep looking for the thing. We're gonna make a card. Um, we want to know what you guys are painting. So if you will post your picture on social media, on our Facebook page, of something that you've stenciled, and you can't do the same one over and over, you have to do different ones. But um, if you'll post a picture of something you painted, then you get extra bonus points if it's one of our stencils. And you do that, and then you get entered to win, and it's one week, so you have from now until next Tuesday to do it. And then, um, you have to come back to our page and you have to see if you won. So don't not check because we've had some people not check and then they don't get their prize. So we can't, we can't know your address until like you win. So you have to communicate with us once you've won. That's what that's all about. Okay, part two, um, oops, part one. Hang on, part two. Okay, so this is super cool. I can't even begin to imagine what a PETA factor it would be to try to hand do all of this stuff and make it look really good. Okay, so it's been done for us and we are excited. So I'm gonna, it's etched. I don't think you're gonna be able to see. It's etched about the B outline all the way around. So it matches this. That's the neat thing about our two part stencils is when things get complicated, we make them two part and then we can line it up exactly with the painting that is on part one. Okay, now I'll line that up. All right, who's excited about painting bees? Okay, who's excited about seeing the top of my head? Because I can never seem to line things up right. I think I talk too much. <laughs> du, du, du. Almost, 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 almost. Okay, almost. So what you have to do, and I think this is a good lesson right here, what you have to do is you have to look over here, then you have to look over here, and then you have to look over here. Like you have to go from corner to corner. If you don't go to all those corners, then you, you might have one little bit that's crooked and then you, it might mess things up. So, and then I've got my tape already on the back, so just push that around. Okay, and now this is actually like kind of a hard part. This is something that, um, <clears throat> that if you don't know how to do it, you can mess it up, okay? So black is hard to base coat over. Get my palette up there. Um, I'm using palette paper, that's on our website. Palette paper is amazing when you're gonna use paints that aren't runny, and it's amazing for when you're gonna mix colors and stuff like that. We did a price comparison. Um, palette paper, I think is like 21 cents a sheet, and um, paper plates that we use, like the wax-coated nice ones, um, are like seven cents a piece, so there's a big difference. But um, when you need a flat mixing palette, you need a flat mixing palette. Um, I like them because the edge isn't there and I can use like the whole sheet and stuff, so it's just I'm used to using it. Um, 
when I painted before, I used to do a whole lot of blending and a lot of art techniques, and that's when I started, but it's good, good stuff. Okay, I'm gonna need more than that. So I've got a goldenrod color and then a banana cream color. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. We're going to use the banana cream color to stencil the body because um, if I use a white to coat over the black just to get that black gone, um, then the white can sometimes, if you don't have it completely lined up, the white can make a, like a little ghost line on the edge. And if it makes that little ghost line, it looks like you have a weird like highlight and it's really ugly and it's very unfortunate. So if you use a color that's a companion color to your other color that you're gonna put on top, like yellow doesn't coat, worth crap. So um, if you use a companion color, then its little halo won't matter, if that makes sense. All right, so we're going to go into our yellow. And really, really, really wipe that off because I don't want any um, tough high edges. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna stipple this for coverage. And I wiped off too much to stipple for coverage. Okay, so we'll just stipple. Now stippling will mean that there's longer drying time. So see how evenly that coats though? All right, and then this is really interesting. We have made a new tool. This is, I wrote it down so I can, it's a multi-masker. Okay, so stencils are masks, right? So this looks like somebody's laughing with a nice little nose there. But what it has, and you can't really see it, this is our prototype. Um, it has a ruler here, it has centimeters over here, it has for spontaneous checks and borders, um, you can do holes. And then what you need when you're going around all this stuff. So I've already ghosted over here on this, um, this um, wing. Let me show you that. So my brush is bigger than my space allowed. So I've got this ghosting down over here. The way I can get rid of that is I can get my click eraser because that's in a, just a really isolated area. It's a PVC click eraser. If, it, if it's dry, it doesn't erase anything. If it's wet, it will erase fresh paint. So I can just wet it and erase it. Oops, I erased my black. My black was fresh. So what do we do about that? LOL. It erases fresh paint. Yes, it does by Joe. I can also, another way to erase actually, is you can get out your brush and you can just brush that in. Okay, so now my black is patched. Um, so yeah, we did the black. So that's, that's a really interesting um, point. I've got a barrette in my hair today, isn't that cute? But that means I can't slide my glasses up and down my head. <laughs> um, so that black paint was done probably 15 minutes ago. So that paint's fresh enough to still be erased by that click eraser. So you've got that 15 minute, 20 minute window of opportunity to use the click eraser. And if you bled under, the nice sharp edges of that click eraser are wonderful for patching, or not patching, but taking away the bleed. Okay, so that's on our website. Oops. Now we go here and I'm gonna use this masking tool. Um, I discovered that Mylar actually makes a brilliant masker. Um, for whatever reason, it's like way better than paper and it's way easier than tape. So as I'm curving, so this has got all these different angles and things going around it. Um, we were doing some stuff with some leaves and some things, and I really just couldn't get a good angle to mask, and so we came up with that guy. It's going to be on the website, um, hopefully soon. Okay, so we're going to go here. We're going to mask on this so we don't make a mess. We'll stipple. The easiest, easiest, don't forget you have to move your mask to the other side when you get there. The easiest thing in the world the easiest way to paint a bee is just stipple it, stipple that color on. Okay, and we'll keep going. Make sure my, yep, my colors are right. I'm gonna go this way, looking for a long, a little bit of a long haul there. Okay, and then we'll stipple. How do you guys mask when you are trying to create, um, how are you masking when you're painting? 
Share the things. Share the love. Okay, so on this one, I don't need it because there's nothing next to it. Okay, so we'll get that on there. Oop, coming around the other side. Isn't that handy? Just straight up the side. That is so great. Okay. Now we look to see how much of it has a lot of black still showing, and I do still see quite a bit of black up here, so I'm gonna go back up there quite a bit here. I also like um, the flexibility of the mylar. I like that I can bend this to hold it firm and taut. Um, that it's really easy to hang on to. Okay, we'll go a little bit more here. And then maybe we'll swirl to smooth. All right, so next we'll go ahead and we'll pick up, I think I'm gonna get a clean brush and we'll flip our paper towel over. This black mat, um, let's talk about that for a hot second. Um, this black mat, you can see I got a whole bunch of paint over here and um, it's the blue that we were doing the highlighting with and stuff. And this is a um, silicone mat and it's ginormous. So I made my mess here. I can just spray right there with my little Zep stuff. We got the Zep cleaner, got it at Menards, just kept using it. And then you use a sponge without a scrubby. If you let it sit there for a few minutes, it's best. But it just comes right off and you have a clean mat again. And it protects your wood surfaces, your tables, your things like that. So you are not cleaning off paint off of like the wood We've got, we've got a mess all over this. And we started out keeping it covered and clean and it didn't work out, but then this mat has been amazing. Okay, and it kind of gives you a boundary. I like that too. I'm gonna go into our goldenrod color. And then we're gonna do the same thing. I can tell right now I'm not gonna wanna do without this mask ever. Okay, so see how nicely that covered? Um, let me go on to, do I have another example? I don't. Um, doo -doo -doo. I want to show you how it does it on black. Let me do it on his eye and I'll just coat back over. Okay, so see the color difference? That doesn't hardly cover at all. And then this is covering brilliantly because it's going over this lighter yellow. It's almost like backlighting it. Okay, and then we will continue. I'll fix his eye in a minute. Okay, and then we'll mask. Mask again. Handy dandy. Okay, so if you are loving this little mask, put an emoji, put a little emoji con thingy, whatever they're called, I'm showing my age, um, in the chat and, or, you know, do a gif, gif, whatever those things are called. Um, but yeah, show us what you think about this. Show the love. Okay, so we're gonna keep stippling. And come down here. Get the bees bum. And then we'll do the other side. Isn't this fun? It's fast, quick. I love stenciling. It's the fastest way to paint ever. Ever, ever, ever. So can I ask a question? Where do you put the things that you paint for yourself? Like, are you putting them in your, you know, living room on the porch? Are you putting them everywhere? Do you only give gifts? Do you only paint to sell? Like, what is your, like, where would you like to see more um, designs? What, where would you like to see designs for certain places? Tell us where those places are in your house. Okay, now we're gonna get this kind of like coastally blue. Shake, shake, shake. Should never, ever, ever pretend like your paint is shaken. <laughs> okay, and we are going to, we're almost done, so make sure you're liking, sharing, and commenting because we are on the home stretch and you, if you're not entered, then you can't win. Okay, so, and make sure you go over to Facebook and like us and then go to YouTube. And please review, give us thumbs up in videos on YouTube and 
you know, give us a heart if you liked what we, you saw on Facebook and stuff like that, because that is the validation that we need. Like we're people behind this company. Like we have a team of people that like cheer when we get a good review or when our customer service gets these just fabulous reviews. We're like, oh my God, Stephanie, look at how much they love you and all that. Like we really get into it. So we want to hear, like we want to hear your feedback. I, even if it's bad, tell us. I don't care either way. I just want to hear the feedback because it's like what we do all day long. We do it for you. So let us know. All right, so we've got our coastal blue. Sorry, I get excited about that. <laughs> um, so we're going to just swirl here and we're not going to undercoat it because we want that to be like a little bit translucent. And if you wanted to get kind of wild and crazy, if you could find a pearlized color for these wings, that would be really pretty and it would add just a little bit of like luminescent. So I'm just gonna swirl, oops, whoo, hi. A little bit less paint. So when you do that and you set your brush down and you instantly see like, ah, I did a thing, don't panic. Number one, you're gonna, gonna have your click eraser because you know you need one. Lift it up, erase it off, dry it off, go again. Um, but stop, don't keep going if you see that you're doing something silly. All right, so now we'll mask the opposite way. This is an amazing, amazing tool. Dustin Beach did this and he's a master of making little tools for us, it's great. Um, I do want to share with you, um, these are big open spaces. Um, I pulled this out and I didn't use it, but this is a um, repositionable adhesive. And if you use that on these big long areas, that will help it not shift. And when you swirl on big long areas, sometimes you can get shifting. So you would just roll that on the back and it would stick. Um, if I don't have to use adhesive, I try not to. So just FYI, um, I, don't like, I don't like things on the back of my stencils because then I can't like organize them and stuff. They stick together. Okay, so now we keep going. We swirl here instead of um, stippling. I'm gonna hold these two down because it does better even coverage. And I'm not wanting full coverage on this. I'm wanting just light, sheer coverage. And that's my control piece, right, that we were talking about earlier. If you can control it, then it makes the painting way easier. I'll go ahead and just do this other wing so we can see the whole effect. And we'll hold down the big areas. So the balance in bridging, so this is like how we work here. Um, the balance in bridging is that the least amount of bridges that will make the stencil behave is the best amount of bridges. Okay, so we try not to overbridge because then things get ugly. And then we try not to underbridge because then you have to struggle to paint. And then we try to bridge um, to make the art beautiful so you don't have to connect and go back and, and um, put, oh, I didn't make my eye black. Let's make my eye black real quick. So if you need to, remember stencils is a layer game. You can just go right back there and take that yellow out. And now it's black and I'll just do one eye because that's, that guy's wet. Okay, do, I'm gonna have to peek. <laughs> a lot of peeking going on on this one. Oh, look at how cool that looks. That is great. Okay, I think we're good. So, if you love this, tell me what you liked. What was the best part? What did you learn? And here we go, reveal. And always brush your little hairs if they fell out of your brush off at the end when it dries. So isn't that amazing? How fun is that to use a two-part stencil? And you can just dust on paint to get the gossamer. You can undercoat to base your darker colors using the mask. Perfect. Ah, this is fun. Thank you guys for joining us, and I hope that we see you again next week on Tuesday, and have a great day.